So Lana, welcome to our today's science lesson. And uh, our lesson today will be is advantages of friction. Now yesterday we was uh, looking into the advantages of friction. And you remember Lana, we mentioned a few advantages of friction. Areas where we require uh, 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 friction. Number one, we talked about when one is walking. When you are walking, you require friction. You require the, 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 the force that opposes motion between the shoe, uh, the shoe sole and the ground. We also talked about when lighting, lighting matches. When you want to light a matchbox, a matchstick from a matchbox, you need to have that part smeared with some, uh, some substance. It needs to be very rough for you to be able to light that particular matchstick. Remember also we talked about uh, vehicles. We said vehicles are treated. You tread them. We talked about something like this. That is a, a tire. There is this part that looks like this. Where the tire comes into contact with the tarmac rod. We talked about this to be treads. What is the importance of treads? Number one, we said you find a person like to increase grip. Increase grip on the rod. The grip of the tire part on the rod so that you can be able to, to move easily. And also, we say that the, fu the function of this stress is to increase friction. Increase friction. Remember, it's not to reduce friction, it is to increase friction, to increase the force that opposes motion. When you talk about decreasing friction, it means these threads are not there. And so we say the, 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 the tire is worn out. Such so that when you, you try to drive, when you when you against brakes, it will just take long for the brake to be able to, to stop. Because the tires cannot be able to grip the rod well. We also talked about when braking. When one wants to brake. Either you are using a, a vehicle or you are using a bicycle. There is that brake pad that touches the rim. If there is water, I, I want to give you an example. When you, when, you, when you go to the car wash, and maybe you, you want to wash your motorcycle, the brake pads sometimes may have water. And if they are not dry, dry enough, when you get the brakes, the, 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 the motorcycle continues moving and produce some, some noise there because it's not gripping the, tire, the, the rim so well. So we see the braking will require uh, 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 friction. Even you yourself as a person when you're braking, when you want to brake, you want to stop, maybe you are running, somebody was running after you. you will, there's a way you will twist your, 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 your foot to be able to brake and so make a turn, so forth and so on. We also talked about when one is writing, when you are writing either on the board or even on a book, you need friction between the pen point and the book or even between the chalk point and the, and the, and the, and the, and the blackboard. So you require friction in between that place so that you can be able to write and write well. Then the last one, of course, I talk about rubbing. When one is rubbing or erasing using an eraser, when you are erasing, you need friction. When you are rubbing the board, you need friction between the duster and the blackboard. If the blackboard is slippery, you cannot be able to rub well. So those are just examples of uh, advantages of friction in what we did yesterday. Now I want us today to discuss about the disadvantages, call them the demerits. The demerits of uh, uh, friction. What are the disadvantages of friction? Now, before we left yesterday, I gave you a, a question. I told you to go. Actually, it was a practical uh, a work I gave you. You go and observe some of the uh, shirts that you're wearing at home or even blouses and the, the collar where it touches the, 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 the neck. And if you did that well, you saw different things. And uh, with me, I have a shirt here. Maybe the, the owner will not see me. So if you can observe well this part that touches the neck. I want you to, to, to look at it so well. 
and tell me what you can be able to say. Look at this part. Does it look like this other part? You can be able to see well. Look at that, this other part. This one here. Is it looking like this? Is it looking uh, so smart? So this is what we are going to discuss in this lesson. What are the disadvantages of friction? And this is one disadvantage of friction. So we are going to, 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 to start from there. So friction wears out things. Number one disadvantage. Wears out objects. Friction wears out objects. And one of the things we have seen is this collar of that particular shirt. It has been worn out. It's worn out. It's going even to, to get a, a worn out until the owner of that shirt maybe may, may, may not use it again. Or even if he wants to change the collar, can change the collar. But after some few months, you'll not be able to see that collar again. It will get worn out completely. So wears out objects like, for example, collars, collars of shirts and blouses. They are worn out and they start, they start uh, uh, coming off. Number two, it wears also shoe soles. Soles of, uh, uh, soles of shoes. If you look at the, some of your shoes at home, you find that the, 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 the soles are worn out. That's why sometimes you take them to the fundi to go and make some treads so that when you are walking you don't, uh, I mean, you don't slip and fall down. So that is the reason why Mama will tell you, or Daddy will tell you, let's go to the phone and carry your shoe so that the phone can do some, some, some trading on the, on, the, on the sole part of it. So that when you are walking, you have a grip of the, of the ground so that you don't fall down. Some of other things that are worn out, of course, is tires. Talk about tires, tires of cars or even bicycles. I talked about a trading company. Trading. There are those companies where where the, their work is to, to just make trades on, 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 on tires. Many tires are brought there when they are worn out and then they are retraded. They become new again on the part that touches the ground. That is all, all done to ensure that the tire can have a grip of the road. If that, it loses the grip, it means that you are likely to cause an accident because when you are going to engage brakes, the car will not stop as you intended to do. We are also talking about uh, our, uh, our rubbers. Look at our rubbers back in school or even whatever you are using at all. The rubber is, it gets worn out. You buy the rubber, it's very new. I have one here. You buy it very new. But as you continue rubbing day in, day out, you find that it's becoming small. Look at this rubber here. My rubber was very new, but now it's getting small, and so I'll be forced to go and buy another one. If you don't help me with the one, I'm going to buy another one, but I know you have so many of them at home, so you bring me another rubber. Look at this one, hmm? worn out because of friction between this part of the rubber and the book when you are rubbing, maybe pencil or, or even ink. So rubbers are worn out, even pencils. That's why I continue are sharpening my pencil every now and then. Look at this one. This tomorrow will not be there. This part, the graphite part of it, which writes, it will get one out and I will continue. I will continue sharpening it. This pencil is not uh, sold uh, at this length when it's very new. It's a bigger one, like this size. But as you continue using it, this part gets worn out, and just so you continue sharpening every now and then. You sharpen, you sharpen, you sharpen, until sometimes to just this. Uh, uh, length and you still can, can sharpen and continue writing. Some of you try to extend here by putting a viral cap here so that the pencil looks bigger but because it has just got worn out. So those are examples of substances which uh, exhibit uh, uh, wearing out of uh, uh, because of, of friction. The last one of, of course is chalks. Chalks get worn out. Look at my chalk. Look at this chalk. It, it, I was using it when it's so big. A full chalk is this size, but now look, it's getting small. Until some time, it will remain this size, and I'll not be able to hold it. And so I'll be required, required to get a new one so that I can be able to write on the board. 
So it, wear, it, it, it wears out. And after wearing out, this is what happens. You get this. After the chalk wears out, this is what you get. Dust. It becomes dust. Because you are using it on the chalkboard. Number two, uh, uh, number two disadvantage of, uh, of friction, of course, is it makes work difficult. Makes, makes work difficult. It makes work difficult. I want you to take, for example, Lana, baby in your home. You have a carton of books. I know you have used a lot of books since class one. You have a, a pile of books there. And then when you place them in, in, in a carton and you want to pull them, you ask just to, to push them and take, this, take them somewhere because you regard them as, as waste. Lana, that's not a waste. So you want to take them somewhere. So when you're pushing them on a, on a rough floor, you find it so difficult to, to, to push it. Because there's friction between the, 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 the carton box uh, uh, below there and the, uh, and the ground, the floor that you're pushing through that carton. And so, if you just pick the same, same carton with those amount of books and place them in, in a very nice floor that is very smooth and try to push, you realize that you're going to use a little force compared to what you used initially on a rough floor. So meaning that initially you are using a lot of force, so the work was very difficult for you to be able to carry out. But in this floor, which is very smooth, work has become very, very smooth, and you can be able to push very fast with a, with a lot of ease. So we are saying that friction makes work difficult. I'm, I'm imagining a person who has just cut a tree, maybe to make some uh, charcoal. Where I come from, people use uh, uh, some trees to make charcoal, even the charcoal that you use. So the, the, the trunk, that log, is left down there, and so people ask, I, I have, to, have to pull it to take it to where it's supposed to be, to be taken. You remember that ground is, is very rough, so they use a lot of force. You find them sweating. They are sweating a lot because they're using a lot of force to be able to pull that particular log of wood and take it to where it's supposed to be taken. So that is because the work has been made difficult because of the rough floor, which is because of friction that is between the log in the ground. So that is how learner uh, friction makes work difficult. Now we want to look at the, the third point, third point about the uh, disadvantages of friction. And this is uh, to wear us out, wear us out parts of a machine, parts of a machine. Now I want you to imagine of a, a wheelbarrow. If you have one at home, just look at where the wheel is. The wheel, and then there's an axle. This axle has a, has a, has a, has a, has a, a metal uh, thing here inside here, where this wheel rotates in. If you look, you continue looking at the hole. This hole becomes larger and larger every day, because this is a metal. This is a hole. So as 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 this. Uh, wheelbarrow continues to, to rotate when carrying out some activities at home, maybe carrying some bricks for, 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 for building, or even carrying the, some, some con water, containers of water in your upcountry home, you realize that this all becomes bigger and bigger every day, until sometime this wheel cannot be able to rotate because the, the hole has become so big, so that the, the wheel just falls on one side. That's because of friction. The friction between this metal uh, uh, bar and the, and, and the hole, because this metal is lying on the on, 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 on the wheel, which is also a metal. So there's no there's no there's no uh, uh, difference. I mean, there's no nothing is 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 is, uh, is securing this particular hole. So it's a metal and again it's a metal. So as it continues to take like that, this part inside here wears out. It wears out, it becomes so big that the wheel cannot be able to rotate. And so you realize that, I will attach that to something else. As, as it continues, if you don't apply oil or grease, you hear some sound, some funny sound there. A squeaking sound that you found from this part. 
So even if the person is 10 meters away, you will hear and say that is so and so coming with a wind farm. Because there is a sound that is going to be produced because this metal is eating on one another, is is rubbing one another. So I'm putting that in bracket because it's not the right term to use. So this one is eaten fully and sometimes you find it becoming so big. So big. So when you apply grease or oil, you put something in between here. And we, we are going to discuss that in ways of reducing friction later on. Why we use grease and oil when we have machines? You realize that we increase, we put a layer here in between the two metals. And so the, the metal is not lying on the other one. So it's lying on a grease. And so it becomes so easy for you to be able to push. So Lana, we are saying friction wears out parts of a machine. And if you don't correct this, if it, go, it continues wearing out, wearing out, day in, day out, sometimes it causes accidents. I'm imagining of a car that is doing this, and every day, maybe it's a matatu, it's on the road, every day, doing this. Sometimes you'll get this, this, this tire will get off the, the, the car, and it will cause an accident. So it's very, very useful that this person, after realizing that, there is friction here to apply grease or oil and or change the tire to bring a new one so that to avoid accidents which may lead to death of uh, uh, human beings. So we are saying uh, friction wears out parts of machines and uh, later you realize that these can lead to accidents. Then number four, number four we are talking about produces, friction produces unwanted unwanted heat unwanted heat remember i said this i'm going to use this as an example this metal is lying on the other one and it's rotating i want if you go and touch this part after your current out some work you'll be burned this part becomes very hot becomes very hot so that heat is not wanted because if you have heat, some heating or uh, heating of this spellings on a machine it means that parts of that machine are getting worn out and they're becoming smaller and smaller every day so you have to, 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 to replace so friction produces unwanted heat unwanted heat that is when machines are working they rub against one another and ends produce unwanted heat the last one of course you'll find that that is the reason why Machines have to be cooled. Remember one use of water. We talked about water in class four. If you can remember so well. And we, we said water is, I and mean, just one function of water is, is using industries. To cool machines. I know you did not get that well until I'm explaining this now. You get it so well. We cool machines using water because water is cold. I want you to imagine of, uh, of a journey taken with your, your dad or mom. So maybe here yeah, up to up country. I'm sure along the way you will have a bottle of water putting somewhere after lifting the bonnet of a, of, a, of, a, of a car. There's somewhere you're going to put some water there, some cold water. They add some water there. Do you know the reason why they add water? To cool the machine. If you're not going to put that water, that vehicle is going to, to stop completely and you're not going to move. So it's very, very important that you understand the uses of water, especially in industries where we have machines. So they use this water to cool the machine. If the machine is not cooled, if the machine is not cooled, then it's going to do what we call a breakdown. It's going to stop working. Things will stop completely. If you are producing uh, leather shoes in a, in a leather turning industry, we are no longer going to wear leather shoes again. We are going to wear sandals, you can imagine because the machines have stopped. So they add water to ensure that uh, um, the machines are cold and continue working normally. Because there is friction being produced when those machines are rotating, when they are turning. In, the, in, in a vehicle, when the, when, when the vehicle is moving, there are some propellers which are moving very fast. And those machines have to be cooled for them to be able to work efficiently. So Lana, we are talking about uh, uh, the analysis of friction and that marks the end of 
our discussion. But I want you to look at the, the disadvantages. They are not more as compared to our advantages. Meaning that friction is good. We, we need friction in our every day to day life. We need friction. If friction is not there, after it has rained, we are going to move out and then fall down because the, the, the ground is going to be very muddy. If friction is not there, we are going to wear shoes and fall down because the trails are not there. If friction, are not, if friction is not there, we are going to ride our, our, our bicycles along the streets and because they don't have trails, we are going to fall down and get injured. So friction is very, very important in our day-to-day -day life. I talked about something called skidding. Skidding is, is found in vehicles where, for example, you find a section of road has been smeared with, uh, maybe, maybe there was an accident, and oil poured on that particular part of the road. If you try to, to, to drive very fast on that road, that's why you, you told to slow down in such instances. Because if you drive very fast, these uh, tires are going to ski. They are going to rotate in one place and you can cause an accident because somebody is coming behind you and doesn't know whether you're not moving. So you're going to collide at the back and then you're going to cause an accident. So skidding is brought about when you're moving a vehicle in a muddy place or even a place where there's oil and the vehicle is, is has some worn out, worn out uh, 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 tires. You are going to, to, to see it not moving but my timing on one place. So until that uh, we we'll finish this and then next our next lesson of course is going to be reducing ways of reducing friction. How can we be able to reduce friction? And I've just mentioned one greasing, applying grease or oiling. That is, we call it, in other words, lubricating. We lubricate machines to reduce friction. Lubricating means we're just going to put a layer of a lubricant, a grease or oil, in between the two metals, the metal bar and the metal of the wheel, so that in between them there's a, there, there, there's a layer there. That layer prevents this metal from falling on the other one and rubbing on one another. So you're not going to hear the voice, number one, the, the sound, sorry. And you're also not, not going to realize the, the heat. The heat is not going to be there because there's something in between them. So thank you so, so much learners. Let us do a revision of this and what we did yesterday. And I'm sure as we come to, redu I mean, to, to, to talk about redu ways of reducing friction, it will be very well acquainted with the information that I've given you earlier. So until next time, Lana, stay at home, sanitize, and stay safe. Until our next lesson. Thank you.